that's the warm-up done. Let's begin. Your whole body's involved in everything. And what I like best about kettlebells is, especially in jujitsu, I see a direct relationship between the work that I put in lifting kettlebells and my performance on the mat. Not only that, your brain produces dimethyltryptamine. And how did you find out about DMT? I'm James Linker, self-taught YouTuber. This video is taking place at a neutral venue. <laughs> And this is a commentary video which needs your input to complete it. Think of this video as a Rubik's Cube, which I've thrown at you because my eyes have gone funny. The question was laid out and the answer will most likely be nuanced, but it makes for a great discussion which can branch off into many areas of fitness, such as the philosophy and discipline with fitness, equipment such as kettlebells with fitness and other branches probably. And so disclaimer, I am a fan of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. I am a massive MMA fan also. It is fair to say there is a wee bit of bro science knocking around the podcast at times, but I enjoy the discussion with a range of guests he has, except Brendan Schaub. My favorite moments are Joey Diaz watching MMA. He is, he doesn't know he where doesn't. he is. He doesn't he know where he is. Down. He doesn't know where he is. This is heart against skill. I'm telling you Suckers. I've been waiting for this fight for three months. This is what I'm talking Elon Musk freaking out his shareholders. And Eddie Bravo going deep. Space is fake sounds ridiculous. Like there's, there's we're, we're looking there. at it and it's and it's fake. That's ridiculous. That's, that's not what it means. Show. It means that all the information we got about all we're those off. lights in the sky. Yeah. Something they're else. Li they're lying yeah, to us. Lying. And so some of you will like Joe Rogan's general fitness information. Some of you will not like it. That's life. We all have different opinions. And I cannot capture his entire fitness philosophy in one video because he's talked about many different aspects of fitness and health over hundreds of podcasts. However, I've done my very best to categorize it for you into certain sections. I philo fax this video. And I'm sure you also have knowledge of his information, which you will bring to this discussion in the comment section below. And when it comes to discussing specific nutritional protocols, in depth. That is not my wheelhouse, but I do want your input on the nutritional information also. And he has tried many eating protocols. He tried the keto diet. He also recently tried the carnivore diet. I just did it to try to find out what it's like to only eat meat. Right. And when you have no carbohydrates, one of the things that's most amazing is that there's no crashing. You would eat and you don't feel any different after you ate other than the fact that you don't feel hungry. Right. Like you don't crash. Right. There's no ups and downs and peaks and valleys. My energy levels were amazing. Two weeks Two in. weeks in, I noticed I felt amazing. Really? And I was shedding weight. I was sh shedding a lot of weight. I think it was like seven pounds down two weeks in. And one of the best guests that he has had on his podcast is Dr. Andy Galpin, who gave one of the most unbiased, balanced, analytical interviews, if you like, into many aspects regarding fitness and health. Whereas, as I alluded to before, there have been many gurus with their biased, non-evidence-based information where they're promoting some book or some specific fitness package they're trying to sell. And obviously, Joe Rogan interviewing these people does not mean that he agrees with their opinion per se. It's just a lot of them are fitness hacks. Kettlebells. And so he sells kettlebells, the Donkey Kong range, and the fitness YouTuber range. Guess who's who? So I'm just going to show you a clip about his philosophy into why he values kettlebells so much. Once you moved on to free weights, you realize like, oh, it's much more difficult to balance weight out as you're pushing it. And then once I moved to kettlebells, I started realizing that functional strength really comes from using your whole body. And that's what you use when you're doing anything athletic. You very rarely isolate things athletic. Even when you're throwing a ball, you're thinking you're throwing it with your arm. You're throwing your with your whole body. Kettlebells are a good tool that we may use. And so yes, the idea of a kinetic chain, training multiple movements is valid. So when it comes to functional training, we do have to be careful with this term. And I have a video dedicated to explaining this, that I feel as though people are so binary and tribal in the fitness industry. And functional training is one of these aspects where people will label something as functional and other things as non-functional. And we have to stop being so binary. If an exercise improves your functional capacity, then it is functional by nature. Many times people will take certain barbell exercises and say they're non-functional, whereas in actual fact they are increasing functional capacity. And the major problem I see is that movement training or exercises which envelop multiple planes of motion, multiple movements within that exercise are classed as functional and then everything else which isn't that is classed as non-functional, moving in multiple planes of motion simultaneously. Yes, that is functional, but other exercises are too. Uh, a lot of people are strong in ways that their body is efficient. 
whether it's uh, kickboxing or whether it's running, whatever your body's used to doing. The more things you can get your body used to doing, the more your body's gonna respond if you put it in an awkward situation. The truth is that fitness and health is a very personal journey and we all have different goals and we all have unique characteristics and there are many ways of training and tools of training that we can use and incorporate to be successful. However, the problem with that is it doesn't sell well. That is not easy to package and sell in the fitness industry that training is so variable in nature. One of my favorites is the alternating clean. And alternating clean, I do it with 70 pounds in each hand. And that's these big gorilla bells. And uh, I, I love these because it makes me feel like a man. <laughs> oh, and the Darth Vader kettlebell. And one of my greatest regrets on this channel was releasing my last video on May the 4th and not making any Star Wars jokes. I apologize. Thank you for watching my last video and your interaction. Joke of the week. I cycle the lotions and also use post-cycle therapy, don't worry. And so this lady said that her father, Jordan Peterson, didn't use to exercise as he did not have enough energy to do so. Put in a little bit of effort to make yourself go exercise, but a lot of people who are overweight and sick don't have enough energy to do that. I don't know about that. And then her subsequent message was then when he moved to a low carb diet, he then did have the energy to exercise. From like my perspective, I've seen my dad and he was very like, you can see from the videos from 2014 before he started going low carb and everything, mm -hmm. he was carrying about 50 extra pounds. Right. And he didn't exercise. And he didn't have enough energy to exercise. That's not but true. But it didn't look no, that's like not true. that. That's not true. He just didn't do it. And let's just say that that triggered Joe into a bit of a speech. You most certainly can. You don't have to do a lot. You just have to do something. You walk up hills. You jump a little rope. You take a little tiny kettlebell. You do a couple cleans and presses. You do a few push-ups. You do a few sit-ups. You get your blood pumping. You're moving. You're alive. You're exercising. To say you don't have enough extra energy to exercise, that's crazy. Modification is the key. And of course, we all have the capacity to exercise. And what that looks like will, of course, differ for different people. And people with serious medical issues, of course, they will have a compromised state of what they can do. But again, the idea of moving our bodies, even for people with medical challenges, is feasible. So this idea of his ties into that from his podcast with Lil Dicky's manager, powerful Andrew Santino. It's good. It feels good to move your body. Joseph likes moving his body loose as a noodle it feels good it feels good to do things whether it's taking a dance class i'm not into that but taking karate <laughs> i'm not you know, into that i like yoga i like running yeah. i like doing jujitsu obviously i like all I like all kinds of martial arts and you move your body Same. get it going you'll feel better afterwards i yeah, know you yeah. don't want to do it i never i've and hardly ever want to do it. And so here, the mental struggle of exercising comes into this conversation, and that's extremely important. If my, I maybe want to want to actually do it five out of ten times, but maybe, I do maybe it. less. Yeah. But I do it. I just do it. I know what it's like to not want to do it. I get it. Shut up. I just start talking to myself. Exercise is not just a physical battle. It can be a mental battle to start exercising, to stick with your exercise. And David Goggins talks about this in his book where he talks about this mental governor in your brain. And of course, he's a slightly extreme example, but the mental aspect of having a health and fitness journey is vital and is perhaps under discussed in a lot of fitness discourse. Got to push past that creepy resistance. And it comes back to this issue of no matter what your goal is with fitness, ultimately that's the consistency of your exercise is absolutely vital. You, what, what's your morning routine like? Or do you have a morning routine that you like? Or do you just kind of... Fasted cardio is what I like to do or fasted yoga. That's my, my most recent thing is I'm doing either 14 to 16 hours depending upon what my day looks like. Nice. So like, intermittent fasting. And then uh, I usually either like yoga or running in the morning. Today was running and then I'll do something in the afternoon either martial arts related or weightlifting related. And so when we think of fasted training, there are myths knocking about in relation to fasted training and for example, fat loss. However, it is reasonable to suggest that people who train early morning may be fasted. That may just be practical, people who like to train early in the morning. However, other people may like to eat before they train in the morning to give them some fuel for that workout. And so when it comes to issues such as fasted training, there are benefits, there are disadvantages. And I do have an older video on this 
experience. However, it comes down to personal preference and many issues with fitness and training come down to a large degree of personal preference. But again, that's hard to package. That's hard to sell to you to say that you have a choice. Training is variable. Much of it depends on you. But essentially, as unfashionable as that information is, that's the truth and that's what's important. And so here's an application where he talks about exercises that you may use during this time of isolation. If you can get any one thing, one piece of equipment that I would think you would need, get a chin-up bar. Everything else you could do with your body weight. If you just write out a body weight workout, so chin-ups, add chin-ups, different kinds of push-ups like Hindu push-ups, do series of, you know, sets of 20 of those, do regular push-ups. Do uh, diamond push-ups, you know, with your hands like this. Someone's been doing some P90X. Uh, you could do wall presses where, like, you do, uh, you put your feet on the wall, and you could do, like, shoulder presses that way where you're pushing things overhead. Crazy cardio workouts just by doing lunges and switching steps and doing uh, what are called Hindu squats. Those are great. There's a ton of exercises that you can learn on, um, on Instagram and on YouTube. Let's be careful with that one. Also, if you want to get a kettlebell, just get one kettlebell there's a ton of youtube videos that'll give you an amazing workout with one kettlebell vince creates magic with one kettlebell by magic i mean destroying your shoulders or britney dawn who does it better but joking aside we have people like steve cotter and steve maxwell who do have youtube videos for example who do of course give good information mark Wahlberg. and so ultimately when it comes to training and fitness we can talk about all the science and the minutia as much as we want but ultimately it's fairly simple in essence challenging your body physically over time and being consistent with it with an eye on longevity and long-term health also and so i wanted to include this clip of joe rogan talking about mark Wahlberg's workouts firstly because they make fun of dr oz which is always valued dr oz's oh. push-ups are both now, Mark's, Mark's looks like tricep push-ups. Mark Wahlberg was doing them way better. I'm sorry. But why did they do that? Marky Mark is a stud. He could Marky do a Mark's real... push-ups were better than Dr. Did... Oz's. And to the people in the U.S. who get this terrible information from Dr. Oz about health and fitness, I feel bad for you. Like when you look at like his uh, dedication to fitness, uh. it's not bull****. He really is up at 5 o'clock in the morning working out like a beast every Here's day. He's the real deal. And also because I wanted to show this clip where Mark Wahlberg takes James Corden through his 4 a.m. workout. And the lesson to take away from that clip is never let anyone call James in your house at 4 a.m. Trust me, 